Getting a man on the moon had been the dream of both the United States and the Soviet governments for years. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. It would be the culmination of the space race. But tied up with this race was another race that most people haven't heard about. The race for the rocks. What rocks? Moon rocks. It was a matter of great pride to both nations. Incredibly, the race was so tight that both American and Soviet spaceships were on the moon at the same time in July 1969. As Neil Armstrong made his giant leap for mankind, a Soviet lunar spacecraft was preparing to land hundreds of miles away and beat the Americans back to Earth with a shovel full of precious moon dirt. Based on previous records, it looked as though the Soviets would win. The Soviet Lunar Program was a series of robotic spacecraft, 24 of which were built and 15 sent on missions to the moon between 1959 and 1976 at a cost today of around $4.5 billion. The Soviets managed all the major firsts except landing a man on the moon. Luna 2 was the first man-made object to reach the moon, crashing into its surface in September 1959. Luna 3 orbited the moon in October 1959, taking the first photographs of the dark side of the moon. In February 1966, Luna 9 became the first spacecraft to achieve a soft landing on another planetary body when it landed on the moon. It took the first black-and-white close-up photographs of the lunar surface. Luna 10 became, in March 1966, the first artificial satellite of the Moon. The next stage in the Soviet lunar program was to develop a lander that could collect and return to Earth moon rocks. The Soviets realized they could collect this material more cheaply and effectively without the massive costs of sending cosmonauts to the lunar surface. The Soviets had almost won the race in June 1969, when Luna 14 had launched, but it failed to achieve Earth orbit when the third stage of its launch vehicle failed to ignite. Soviet hopes now rested on Luna 15. Luna 15 had a mass of 12,500 pounds, or just over 5,600 kilograms. It was fitted with stereo imaging system, a remote arm for sample collection, and a radiation detector, so the spacecraft could investigate gravitational fields, photograph the moon, and scoop up dirt for analysis. Around a third the size of the Apollo lander. Luna 15 was launched atop a Proton-K Block D rocket from the Baikonur launch site on the 13th of July 1969. Meanwhile, Apollo 11 and its three astronauts lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center atop a massive Saturn V rocket on the 16th of July. It was the fifth crewed Apollo mission and the first to attempt a soft landing on the moon. The day after the American launch, Luna 15 arrived in moon orbit. It looked as though the Soviet Union would win the race for the rocks. Soviet ground control planned to carry out two orbital corrections to the spaceship on the 18th and 19th of July, but the ruggedness of the lunar terrain was a problem soon to be faced by Apollo 11, prompted a delay. The controllers had to spend nearly four days studying data to map out a landing plan. While the Soviets worked to solve the terrain issue, the Americans gained the edge. On the 19th of July, while Luna 15 was orbiting the Moon, Apollo 11 entered lunar orbit as well, at an altitude of 100 miles. During orbit, the command module Columbia separated from the last spent rocket stage, turned around and docked with the Eagle lander. The next day, 20th of July, Eagle separated from Columbia and began its descent to the lunar surface, touching down with Neil Armstrong at the controls at 2017 hours. Four forward, drift into the right a little. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. 
Six and a half hours after landing, Neil Armstrong, followed by Buzz Aldrin, took his first step on the moon at 0256 hours, 21st of July 1969. Mindful of the importance of lunar soil, Armstrong collected a small sample in a bag in case the mission was aborted before further EVAs were planned. It appeared as though the United States had won the race for the rocks. But the Soviet Union was not out of the race just yet. While Armstrong and Aldrin were walking around on the moon, Luna 15 was being prepped for landing. The Soviet spacecraft was even captured on film flying over the American Eagle lander. At 15.47 hours on the 21st of July, Luna 15 fired its main retro rocket engine to initiate descent to the surface. But four minutes into its descent, transmission suddenly ceased. The spacecraft at an altitude of 1.9 miles or 3 kilometers above the moon's surface. Descending out of control at about 300 miles per hour, the spaceship most probably impacted the side of a mountain in the Mare Crisium. Less than two hours after Luna 15 had crashed, the Americans departed for home. When Eagle lifted off from the lunar surface at 17.54 hours, 21st of July, Armstrong and Aldrin had collected 47.5 pounds, or 21.55 kilograms, of moon surface material that was worth its weight in gold to scientists back on Earth. So the Americans not only won the race to put a man on the moon, but they also won the race for the rocks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.